Hey there, how's it going? It's good to see you. I gotta wash this. All right, thanks for stopping by today. My name is Will and welcome to the channel. This is a place where we discuss fun ideas and interesting facts and I'm very excited to be making my first full length video today. Let's get right into it. Video number one, well, I guess technically video number two is pretty important. So I thought we'd focus on a group that is often overlooked and misrepresented in our society, college students. <laughs> Okay, fine. Um, American college kids have it way easier in a lot of ways than tons of people on earth. That's fair, but especially in the COVID era, everyone's got their own set of unique, difficult challenges. That's no different for uh, kids in school or kids in college. So since I start college in a week, and since you or someone you love might be enrolled in or working at a college, let's talk about 10 ways coronavirus will continue to impact colleges this fall and see what we learn. Number 10, sudden campus closures. Nothing is more frustrating than spending an entire year deciding which university you want to attend, making travel and living arrangements for your new home, and then finding out weeks before the first day of school that your university has made the difficult decision to close its campus and conduct all coursework online. This is the sad reality for many college freshmen and upperclassmen face an equally difficult situation. Colleges and universities all across the country, such as Boston College and Pepperdine University, have made this call in the waning weeks of summer. UNC recently shut down its campus only one week after the school year started due to a spike in COVID-19 cases on campus. More campus closures may be inevitable. I myself am very ready to move out and make some more fact videos from my college dorm, but turns out I might be back home sooner than I thought. Number nine, upended college admissions. Thanks to the coronavirus, standardized testing administered by the College Board and the ACT have been completely canceled for the past several months. In response to these cancellations, FairTest reports that 1,450 accredited colleges and universities have adopted test optional policies for fall 2021 admissions, including all eight Ivy League institutions. This has forced college admission staffs to adjust their entire admissions process, and more importantly, it's forced applicants to find other ways to distinguish themselves to the schools in a time where sports and extracurriculars are also unfortunately limited. And hey, I'll be the first to admit how much um, trouble I had with standardized testing, but I guess not having the option to take them at all is uh, maybe probably worse. Number eight. Online class frustrations. Whether or not institutions have chosen to open their campuses at all, almost every college has made plans to administer courses online. And this transition has not been as simple as it may seem. Many professors teach courses that are not intended for an online format, making this adjustment strenuous. Retaining student engagement is also a big challenge with online courses. It's hard to deny the frustration associated with poor quality live streams or glitchy pre-recorded videos. Plus you got the temptation of wanting to watch more fact videos. Uh, if I ever make them. Number seven, crackdown on number of roommates. Several colleges have announced plans to significantly reduce their on-campus housing density in response to the pandemic. Gone are the days of multiple students living shoulder to shoulder in a small dorm. The University of Maryland, for example, has decided to offer housing to only around 75% of students that apply, a sizable reduction. Some schools are also designating housing for students that contract COVID-19 mid-semester. Wow, um, probably not the best situation to live in the quarantine house. Hey, mom. Yeah, yep, I'm moving into Quarantine West. Uh-huh, yeah, with the other quarantines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should be good. Nope. Luckily, my school is letting me move in with my roommate, Thomas. Yeah! Old friend of mine, uh, y'all don't know him yet. Maybe someday. I mean, to be fair, you barely even know me, so... Number six, cancellation of college sports. Lots of college kids would probably admit that one of the highlights of the school year is attending home sports games. But thanks to the virus, attending such games will look nothing like it did last season. In fact, it may not be possible at all. Competitive conferences like the Big Ten and the Pac-12 have already announced that they won't be participating whatsoever in the fall 2020 college football season. Schools that fall under conferences that still plan on playing come fall 
are limiting their stadium capacities in order to minimize contact between students or fans. Well, uh, seems like football's gone, but I guess golf should be fine. <sighs> should have known the day would come where I'd have to appreciate golf. Number five, heightened tension between administration and student body. Many schools gearing up for a large student return to campus already fear the worst when it comes to virus spread. Administrators assume that their students will not be adhering to social distancing guidelines and will instead move forward with tailgates, Greek life parties, and other gatherings. School leaders at Clemson, Virginia Tech, and elsewhere are already cracking down hard on such gatherings due to early signs of trouble on campus. Yeah, yeah, I'd say pretty safe bet that a lot of virus is going to get spread between kids at parties this fall. Oh well, wasn't going to get invited to those anyway. Number four, spikes in number of cases. Maybe the most straightforward numbers-driven fact on this list is that a return to college campuses has already and will continue to cause spikes in positive test results for COVID-19. MarketWatch has compiled total case counts per university, and as of this week, OSU has reported 23 positive cases, Colorado College 155, Notre Dame 222, and UNC 177 with 350 more in quarantine. I don't really know enough to make a comment on whether opening schools is a net good or net bad decision, but after researching a lot of content for this video, uh, I think a lot of kids are probably going to contract the virus. Hard to say. Iffy subject. I guess we'll all know what happened by Christmas. Number three, issues of food and housing insecurity. Last March, the Hope Center for College Community and Justice conducted a study to uncover COVID-19's impact on the food and housing insecurity experienced by college students. They found that 60% of surveyed students were living with some kind of insecurity throughout the pandemic. 38% of surveyed students at four-year institutions struggled with some level of food insecurity and 41% with housing insecurity. With more campus closures potentially on the way this fall, these issues of food and housing insecurity will sadly continue. Number two, steep tuition costs. Rising tuition costs have been a major concern for undergraduate and graduate students for years. With the majority of coursework being moved online and a large percentage of college students learning from home, one might think that schools would lower their cost of attendance. In fact, USA Today reported from Student Loan Hero that 66% of students agree that in-person classes are objectively higher quality than online remote classes, and thus tuition rates should drop. Unfortunately, many colleges cannot afford to lower tuition due to the country's economic downturn, so now these institutions are bracing for impact as they predict many students will choose to unenroll and not pay for the time being. Number one, issues with mental health, depression, and anxiety. A survey conducted by the Healthy Minds Network found that students across 14 different campuses generally agreed that the pandemic made it more difficult for them to access mental health resources last spring. The research also revealed that students experienced much higher rates of depression and anxiety once the calls for social isolation were well underway. One silver lining from this survey is that almost 70% of the students found their administration to be supportive throughout the pandemic and about 80% found their professors to be a strong source of comfort. And above all else, I think cultivating that environment of support on campus and maybe online should be held paramount. I really enjoyed researching the facts for this video, and I love trying to present them in a fun and entertaining way. But as you heard, some of the things I found were pretty deep. So to my fellow college students, I hope this semester you surround yourself with people who don't minimize the challenges that we're facing but who actually recognize them and who want to see you get through them and be stronger on the other side. And to uh, anyone else who saw this video, maybe this was just a quick lesson in empathy for the college kids and professors and university staff in your life. Either way, thank you so much for watching my first full length video all the way through. It was really fun to make. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to hear some more interesting facts from a kid you don't know. I will see you around campus. From a social distance.